Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Prada Museum for another of our weekly sessions of short conversations in English here with the American friends of the Prada Museum. Today, we'll be looking at a beautiful mythological painting by Velazquez, but I think that you'll agree with me that this is not your typical mythological painting. This is Velazquez's depiction of the god Mars. Mars is the Roman name for the god of war and it was painted around 1638. And Mars is identifiable for his attributes of war attire, usually a helmet and a spear or a baton. And he's associated with ideas of power and triumph and virility. And anyone who can think of other images of this god of war, of Mars, might expect to see Mars as a victorious, triumphant, powerful god, which is not exactly what we see here. Velazquez has put his own twist on this portrayal of the god. We don't see somebody who's triumphant, but he rather looks kind of tired. He's not somebody who looks powerful and victorious, but almost melancholic. And where is he exactly? It looks like he's sitting on the edge of, of an unmade bed. And this refers to a story with Mars related to lust, because Mars was caught with somebody else's wife. He was caught with Vulcan's wife, and Vulcan's wife was none other than Venus. And Vulcan was able to catch the couple uh, in the act in bed by encasing, by enveloping them in this iron net in a way that it exposed them to the gods and embarrassed them. So although Mars was physically the mightier of the two, we see him here maybe alluding to the end of that episode in a moment of perhaps defeat or ridicule or shame. Mythology is actually a relatively small part of Velazquez's body of work, but these are paintings that receive a lot of attention because they are ambiguous, because they're open to interpretation, because they're full of second meanings and their stories aren't so clear and direct. They're full of paradoxes and twists and turns, and he gives us the hint of something familiar and then mm, we, we find ourselves going down an unexpected path. Even with the subject of Mars that seems like it should be pretty straightforward and pretty direct, only one person, it's not a complicated composition necessarily, the subject is still presented in a way that the story is not immediately clear, it's not immediately evident to us because of his gesture, because he looks so relaxed and much more human than what we think normally the god of war might look like. Really, if it weren't for the helmet and the baton, we might not even think that this is a god at all. Mythological subjects were really a playground for painters like Velazquez, who were able to take advantage of these topics to explore the breadth of human emotion and experience and gesture in ways that other genres of painting, that other types of painting, like royal portraits, or religious commissions might not allow. Mythological subjects allowed the artist for more liberty in the reinterpretation. And Velazquez uses this opportunity to remind us that this is not just a reproduction of reality either, that this is a mythological subject, but first and foremost, it's a painting. And this is echoed in the execution of the painting, in the style as well. Notice how soft the edges of Mars' body is, how they are. Especially in the hand that he's resting his face on. These are the kind of creative liberties that Velazquez couldn't have taken with a royal portrait. Another great example of Velazquez is really loose, really daring brushwork is in another painting that is somewhat related to this in terms of, of its subject, 
although we don't have it here at the Prado, which is the Venus del Espejo, the Rokeby Venus, which is in the National Gallery of London, Venus, of course, being Mars's lover. So this is a very clever, very original portrayal of the god Mars, but we can find a few precedents for this kind of portrayal in art. And one of them is uh, called the Ludovici Ares. Mars is the Roman name for the god of war, and Ares is his Greek name. And the Ludovici Ares is a Roman copy of a Greek statue, uh, which is today in the Palazzo Altemps in Rome. And we might also think of a painting by Caravaggio called Amor Vincidomnia, which was painted just a few years earlier. And uh, these are both images that if you're interested, you can look them up, and I think that you'll find a few similarities between those and Velazquez's portrayal of the god of Mars. So thank you for joining us for another of our weekly conversations in English, and we'll see you again next Wednesday.